Greetings, fellow mathematicians, and welcome back to the Art of Integration. We're going to take a look at another integral that we can solve with a creative algebraic trick, multiplying by 1. Now, if we take a look at our integral, there's not much that we can do to it to rewrite or simplify it. So it seems like we're kind of stuck. Now, our integral does contain trig functions, and if that's the case, you have an integral with trig functions, and you have no idea what to do, Try applying some of the trig identities. The most important trig identities of all are the Pythagorean identities. Now the Pythagorean identities involve squared trig functions, but our integral just contains sine of x, not sine squared. So how would we make use of the Pythagorean identities here? Well, what we're going to notice is that our denominator, 1 plus sine of x, that's a factor of 1 minus sine squared of x. Now let's use the basic algebraic result for this problem right from the start. And what we're going to be thinking is that 1 plus sine of x times 1 minus sine of x. If you correctly multiply or FOIL that out, that comes out to 1 minus sine squared of x. And what we can do now with that 1 minus sine squared of x is rewrite it as a single term in the denominator as cosine squared of x. So how do we put the pieces together? Our integral in the denominator has 1 plus sine of x. We're going to try to multiply by 1. And if we take a look at this identity up here, we would like a factor of 1 minus sine of x in that denominator. So we're going to multiply by 1 in the form 1 minus sine of x divided by 1 minus sine of x. So let's write that down. We have our original integral. And we're going to multiply by 1 in the form a quantity over itself. And the quantity over itself that we'll be using is 1 minus sine of x. All right, and from here, we're going to multiply these denominators. We already kind of worked that out up here. We can rewrite 1 minus sine squared of x from your Pythagorean identity as cosine squared of x. And now we have a single term in our denominator, which might allow us to use some basic results on fractions. So if we simplify this, the denominators, when you expand or multiply them out, those will simplify with your Pythagorean identity to cosine squared of x. But we're still going to multiply the numerators. So here, the numerator is 1 minus sine of x. All right, now why is this helpful? Well, notice here we have now a single term in our denominator, cosine squared of x, whereas the original form for the integral, that contained two terms in the denominator. So here, we can't split this fraction up, but we can split this one up. We're going to rewrite that as two separate fractions, 1 over cosine squared of x. And then minus sine of x divided by cosine squared of x. Now what we can do is rewrite each of those as other trig functions. 1 over cosine squared, that's easy to rewrite. That just becomes secant squared. And we're going to split this fraction apart. We're going to think of sine of x divided by cosine squared of x as 1 over cosine of x times sine of x divided by cosine of x. And now we can rewrite each of those factors. 1 over cosine is secant. Sine divided by cosine, that's tangent. So we can rewrite this fraction, that one there as well, as secant x times tangent x. 
And at this point, each of those terms has a basic antiderivative. You've probably learned these back in your Calc 1 course. That's probably the first place you learned this. What trig function differentiates to secant squared? You know it. That comes out to tangent. So here, the antiderivative of secant squared x is going to be tangent x. And also, what trig function differentiates to secant times tangent? That's going to be secant. So here, the antiderivative of secant times tangent, that's secant. And at this point, we're done. Don't forget your plus c. And we get our antiderivative here by using our algebraic trick, multiplying by 1, which was right here in the beginning. And there we go. Now, there's another way to solve this integral. Our integral here involves a rational function containing sine of x and cosine of x. That other method is called Weierstrass substitution, but it's a lot more complicated. We're going to have that linked down below in the description to a future video on that. So here, that was it. Once we figured out what form we wanted for 1, that gave us an easy way to make use of Pythagorean identities, and the rest of it fell into place. Hope you enjoyed this problem in our series, The Art of Integration, where we're all about creative ways to solve integrals. Hope you enjoyed the problem. If you did, support the channel, like, and subscribe.